I'm going to take things underground. We've seen a lot of stuff you know, above ground, um, how to properly get uh, as much and as detailed data of above ground structures and, and, and art, artworks and buildings and stuff. We've seen a lot of presentations about the platforms that can collect the data. What I'm going to talk about is what happens under our feet. So behind me is a picture that is telling a story on its own. We have under us a lot of infrastructure, utilities, and so forth. Now, if I ask all these utilities in this picture, can you give me a map of where you are? Do you think I'm going to get this picture, yes or no, or do I get nicely you know, parallel pipes? So the problem is that what happens under our feet is to a large extent unknown. And the data that has been, um, has been fed into our systems is transferred from old pi or old maps and stuff like that. Now, if we keep on doing things the way we're doing, we're never going to improve. So the question is, how can we move to a state where we know what's happening underground as well as we know what's happening above ground? So I don't know what the signal is for the next. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so there's some obvious questions. Um, is an as-built map important? And I can't see anything, so I have to move here. Um, so basically, the way I see it, if you own a pipe, but you don't know where it is, it's a liability. Once you know where it is, it becomes an asset. And that's a, that's a small two words, but it's a very big difference. Second one, do utilities assign enough budget to obtain an accurate uh, as-built? Well, surprisingly, no. If you look at a total tender cost of what they do to install new pipes or maintain it, and you look at the section that is dealing with the as-built and how that should be made, it's quite underserved. Let me put it that way carefully. Next one. So what do you get if you don't ask, if you don't pay for it? Well, not much. You get what you pay for. And sadly enough, in a lot of cases, no matter where you go today or tomorrow, with some exceptions in some countries because they have regulation, you get what you pay for, and usually that's not going to be enough to manage that particular pipe on a lifetime span basis. So here's some examples. This is a 510 meter long horizontal drilling. The red line is what we map with our gyro mapping technology. Reduct develops gyro mapping technology, but I'm not going to talk about the technology. You can come visit us at our booth if you want to know more about the technology. I'm going to talk about why I think quality assurance in this segment of the market is important. The customer had the yellow dotted line in his GIS platform. Now, luckily, the engineer that was in charge of the project already realized that that looked a little bit artificial, and it turned out to be the as planned. However, a lot of the data that we carry today in our systems are as planned, as converted, or whatever. And it doesn't have a label being good or bad. So as planned information, by definition, is a liability. How can we turn it into asset? Here's another. This is an extreme example. The, customer, the owner of this particular pipe segment had these two manholes, the left one and the right one. We, we knew where they both were. And this, the red line was the line that he had in his GIS platform between them. He knew it was wrong because the pipe was coming in on the south side over here. So he thought there was a horizontal drilling that was drilled in some sort of strange curve. We mapped it, and we found this. Yeah? So basically what they'd done, they drilled all the way to a parking lot and then trenched it back to the, to the manhole. Owner of the network didn't know that. So if work is being done anywhere on the right-hand side, he will tell the contractor, I am not there. Go ahead. This was taken in 2013. Now let's move to the 2022 map. And you see a lot of construction has taken place. And luckily, because he mapped it, he could tell him to stay away from it. So what you need to realize as a pipeline owner is the asset the data that you gain on your asset is for the life of the asset. The above ground changes all the time. So if you don't get it right in the first place when you build it, you probably missed your best chance to do it. So let's go into that, into that a little bit deeper. So how can we assure accuracy? Well, one option is, as a utility, you send in supervisors into the field. Yeah, Very expensive, very time consuming. And that supervisor, if I just look around here, 
must be a miracle person because now you need to have knowledge about 65 million technologies on how they're used on your network. In the olden days, it was very simple. You had a tripod, and that was about it. Now, you need to be an expert in everything. Nobody is that. So that's not the solution. So this is what I already covered. So the in-depth knowledge of the, the, the technologies is, is not possible. So the only way to get it better is to make your tender specifications clearer. What do I want? How accurate do I want it? And possibly with what method do I want to have it obtained? Yeah? So if we look at the, uh, the utilities perspective, the utilities' primary need is very basic. They want accurate as-built data, delivered on time, at a consistent point frequency, and a consistent point quality. That's what, he, that's what the utility wants. What do they not need? They don't need equipment management issues, contractor performance monitoring, or data quality assessment, because they just don't have those skills in the house for all the technologies that are used it these days to get their, their, their assets mapped. OK. So the requirement for a consistent quality as built is threefold. First of all, you've got to work with the, quality, the right quality equipment. Yeah, if you, again, crap in, crap out, use the right equipment. But then secondly, make sure that the people that operate them are skilled operators. I can give somebody a Mercedes who's a terrible driver and he's a danger on the road. Yeah? It's very simple. But like on the road, how do we police it? Well, and that's what I would like to talk about. That's the third part of this pie, the closing the circle. It's a quality assessment and control. Now, who does the quality assessment and the control? What I'm going to show you is that we, as manufacturer of technology, have taken that upon ourselves to do it ourselves on behalf of the utility and on behalf of the contractors using our equipment. Because we are the experts of our technology, not some individual who works for the utility. Let us help you create a good as-built. So traditionally, this is the circle that we all know. We have a utility. They send out a tender. It's awarded to contractors. And the contractors deliver the as-built to the utility. Now, there's an inherent flaw. If we go one down, please. Can we click? So there's, a, there's an inherent conflict of interest. The contractor makes his as-built. What's the contractor going to give you? What you want to hear or what he really did? You never know. So why are we doing it this way? Because it's cost efficient. Yeah, it's easiest to give it to the contractor. He's there anyway. So how can we keep the efficiency but improve the quality insurance. That's the trick. So what we have introduced is that we made all our units cloud connected. And what that means is, there we go. What happens is, in that situation, the as-built specs are also delivered to our cloud mapping expert. And he knows, or she knows, what the contractors must meet in terms of the specifications issued by the utility. So our cloud services will do that. Now, the contractor will use our equipment and continue to make the as-built as normal. We don't change anything there. But once they save the data, the performance statistics of the measurement that he did is copied to our cloud environment. Not the XYZ, because that's not our, that's not our property. Only the performance statistics. And every day, an expert will look what happened the day before and assess whether the measurement done with our equipment is reliable or not. Reliable or not. Yeah, very important. Now, what does, the, what does our mapping expert do with this? Let's go to the next one. Twofold. First of all, if the utility so wants, they will get a pass-fail report every morning. Now, why is that important on a daily basis? The pipe is still accessible. If there is something fundamentally wrong with the data, or the utility wishes to make sure that the data is correct, they can send the, uh, the, 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 the operators back to that pipe and do it again the next day. If he waits a week, it may be connected to the network. You can never access it again for years to come. Yeah? Oops, can we go back? Second thing is very important. What do we want? As I said before, what does the utility want? They want accurate data. Now, if a contractor makes an error that results in a fail, 
we will contact that contractor and ask him why he failed. How can we help you to not fail again? Yeah, and that's a step that has never been taken by a contractor before, by a, a, a manufacturer before. We need to make sure that in this flow, everybody improves himself. Yeah. Okay. So I have an example here. If we go to the next page, and I'm, I know I'm not in the picture, but sorry about that. Um, I, I will not go into what the spread means, but spread is a very important factor in which we assess whether a, a measurement is reliable or not. Now, in this case, of course, the thing is in front of it. Everything inside the green box is what the utility wanted. All the blue dots are the actual measurement results. And if we go one further, uh, yeah, go one further. So of the 47 measurements, and this is the February 2023, when we started monitoring for this particular customer, they did 47 managements on measurements on their network, 28 met, it, met the uh, specs, but 19 did not, 40%. Huge, yeah? The utility doesn't know that. They don't know. They just get a line, and they go like, oh, it must be good. So we started working with their contractors, and now in July 2023, 48 measurements became 75 measurements in that month. 66 met the utilities criterion and nine did not. So we've already moved everything almost into that box. Funny enough, as you will see, that most of the ones that are missed are in the Z spread and we know why that is because there is a very specific issue with that particular pipe. And as a result, Reduct redesigned its centralizer to go over that particular uh, those humps much easier and, and a couple of months later everything is in the box and we keep monitoring it. So this is the power of working in the flow of, of the, 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 the process of, of obtaining an S-build. Yeah? And um, you know, we, we did not really build the cloud to do that. We get suggestions from our customer every day, every week, about how we can get more out of this platform and how to get the accurate data into their, into their, into their systems as quickly as possible. So to summarize, we have the circle, quality. Uh, we, make, we make the equipment. That's the primary thing we do. Our uh, academy assures that the operators always have access to the latest training programs, videos, and everything else. And the Greta Cloud now provides the quality assessment and control. So I think we've now finally closed for our particular product, the circle, to make sure that the utility gets what they want, always and every time. And they have time to correct it if it would have gone, if it goes wrong for some reason. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. It's, uh, like I said, it's a bit underground, but uh, I'll go back to this picture. And I just want to remind you that, you know, if you don't know where your asset is, it's a liability. Let's work together to make them all assets. Thank you very much.